Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle. And today I want to share with you how I use core knowledge geography in my homeschool. If you're new here, I have an eight-year-old, a four-year-old, and a one-and-a-half-year-old. I'm homeschooling my eight and four-year-old. And I know people have a lot of questions on core knowledge and how to use it. It can seem very overwhelming when you first look at it. So I want to make this video to show you how I organize a lesson. Now this is the geography booklet for the student book for kindergarten. I started with this level because my eight-year-old had no geography at all from she did kindergarten through second grade in the public school system and she didn't have any experience with geography at all. So I started with the kindergarten level with her so it goes pretty quick and there are different levels for first grade, second grade, third grade, and so on. So when we finish this, we will go on to the first grade one. But my four and a half year old does join us for this. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you guys how I use this. All right, like I said, this is the core knowledge geography. And if you didn't know, core knowledge is a free curriculum online. You can get all the student books, teacher guides, everything free online. I chose to purchase the student book so my child could read through the book and it's nice to have those visuals. You could also just bring up the entire thing on your computer and show your kids while you read along. That's also an option. It's extremely cost effective because it's free. But I chose to get this. I think it was seven dollars to buy the student reader. What I really like about these readers is my daughter can read them independently but also, it's just the right amount of information for the grades that they talk about. So for example, I said this was kindergarten. This is very on par for what a kindergartner the exposure that they could really handle. I think a lot of ki or curriculums that say K through 12, it's really hard to narrow down each age group. Either it's too much information or not enough. So I really like that each book is for a particular age. Now, because my daughter, my eight-year-old, is so much older than kindergarten, we fly through this in about a day. You can break this each lesson into multiple days, especially if you're working with younger kids, but we have no problem going through one lesson once a week. So, what I do to prepare myself is I get our reader, I get my computer out, because again, the entire curriculum is available for free online. So I normally look at the teacher guides online, but I printed it out because it would just be easier to do it this way to go through it. So this is the teacher guide for chapter six. So I also, they have a printout where you can print a blank sheet out and plan your days. Now again, this could be a multiple day program. They do give you some example lesson plans, but again, because my eight year old this is pretty easy for her, but she didn't have a lot of exposure at all in public school. We're starting at a much younger level, but we can also go through it a lot quicker. So like I said, we do a lesson once a week on Mondays and we get through one lesson and it should last us until that. So it's also nice that you're not, so you're talking about a topic for about two weeks here, which isn't bad. And you can even extend that more if you're doing a lesson for multiple days. So this is the what you will pull up on the teacher's guide. Again, this is all available on the website. I'll link it down below. But this is what you would pull up for Let's Explore Our World Lesson 6 or Chapter 6. So right here, this just tells you what things you're going to need. This right here are the pages you should print out. Again, those are free online. It tells you you'll need the student reader or to pull it up online you can also do i've seen people pull it up on their kids ipads or tablets where the student reader's on there and then the parent has their tab or their teacher guide on their computer whatever works for you so it's going to tell you your primary focus so what things you're going to be going over i really like the what the teacher needs to know i think this is really helpful it gives you a brief overview and then starts your actual lesson so what I really like about core knowledge is it's very discussion based. So you introduce your lesson by just asking a question and discussing it with your child. And it gives you vocabulary you're gonna be going over, but you don't have to specifically say, we're gonna be talking about island and all this. It's just, this is for your information, the things you're going to be going over. 
So it tells you what you're going to need to be doing after you ask that discussion question. You're going to go to chapter 6, turn to page 28 of your book, and it looks like we're going to be talking about Europe in this chapter. So again, it's not too much text, not too much information. It's not going to go really deep into these things, but I'm looking for more of an exposure at this point, not going too deep with things. So we go back to our lesson plans. It will tell us we're going to be talking about this. It's going to tell us to get out a globe or a map. We have a world map that we just pulled out and we talk about where Europe is that we'll be talking about. So, for example, this is the same 6.1. This is a free, again, printout that goes with the online curriculum. And it's gonna, you're going to point out your, and it even makes sure to point out to you that you're only covering the countries mentioned in this student book. There are more countries, yes, but you're only covering these right now. In other books, in later years, you'll cover different ones, but it's telling you you're only covering this right now. So again, you're just going to go into different basic discussion about different languages that people speak in different countries. I'm going to talk about what I really like too is that it has a lot of discussion questions. You know, have your child look at pictures, what do they think, and then bring in things, new information like how they have, how we have Veterans Day and how in the United States we celebrate that, but in other countries they have different holidays. I believe it's called Remembrance Day in Europe. So we talk about similarities. So when a child can make that connection, it helps them remember things. And it gives, it gives you some questions to go along with that. Each page pretty much has its own set of little discussion questions that you can go through. You're going to also naturally be introducing vocab in here. Castles, kings, different things like that are naturally going to come up in your discussion of these things. Structure. So again, Then you're looking at different things here. And every time you're referencing a different part, it's telling you to refer back to the map so your child can see where it is. We also get our giant world map out. If you don't have a giant world map, there is a world map available as well. So every time we talk about something new, I have my kids fill out what continent we were talking about. So we've obviously covered North America, South America, we're working on Europe next. So they'll be filling that one out soon. But it's simple, it's just discussion questions. Introducing ideas and new words that they might have not heard at this level. Of course, my eight-year-old has heard of castle and structure, but it's still helping reinforce those concepts. Okay. So each, like I said, each page, page came with its own discussion questions, and then that's it. Next would be chapter seven. So there are different things you can do with that. So you kind of wrap up the lesson. You're going to label Europe on your world map. They have a song. What I really like about Core Knowledge is they have online resources also for free and it's divided very easily to find. Everything's divided by chapter and it tells you exactly in the teacher guide when to refer to something. And it gives you the link so you can click directly on it. So for example, this is, right? So you go down to your chapter. So we're on chapter six. It gives you videos. It gives you sometimes activities to do. So it gives us two video options here, which is really nice. It's like someone's doing the hard work for you in this. All right, so let's go back to this. So it's going to tell us that we're also going to play our continent song. This is a very good song. My kids really like it. It really helps them remember the seven continents in the world. 
So for those online resources, resources I just showed you, you're going to be talking about the lar five largest castles in the world. You're going to watch a YouTube video about that. It gives you some information. Again, this is the link you're going to click on when you're online. It'll take you directly to that YouTube video. And it gives you different questions to go along with this. And again, these are optional activities. But because it's the younger grades, we usually do at least one, if not both, activities. Because we have time. It gives you the option of building a castle using magnet tiles or blocks or whatever you have, which is fun. And then it gives you another link here, same thing. You're going to go to the Eiffel Tower. And when you go there, you're going to take a 360 tour of it and talk about different things. And that's it. That is all you have to do for the kindergarten Let's Explore Our World. I am sure there's more to do as the grades get higher up. And I'll, of course, make videos of that when we get there, but it's simple. It seems overwhelming at first when you first look at it, I agree. But we are also using the science curriculum. And I gotta say, it's working really well. My kids like it, they're engaged. It's not overwhelming information. And it's fun. And it's, the way it's set out makes it easy to teach. So, that is how I use the core knowledge geography units. Thanks for watching.